Hi. So I am currently on Namdu Island. Um, and I thought I'd make a little video about it because before I came here, I did some research on the island and I typed in on YouTube, Namdu Island, and nothing really came up that was in English. Um, lots of Vietnamese stuff did come up, but I thought I'd make an English video for curious Western tourists who want to come visit Namdu Island. Um, because, yeah, I've spent a few days here and I definitely think it's worth the visit. Um, mind you, only for a few days, but definitely worth the visit. So, yeah, Namdu Island is a small island situated about 80 kilometers out of Arakia, which is a small town right down south of Vietnam, um, about 400,000 people living there. Um, it's pretty much just like a town that people go to to get to the islands such as Namdu and Phu Quoc. Mostly Phu Quoc, actually. That's pretty much like the biggest um, like tourist destination for travelers wanting to go to an island in Vietnam. Um, that and Cat Ba and Ha Long Bay. But Namdu is more of, it's more of a little hidden gem, I guess. Um, it's, yeah, there's just not a huge influx of Western tourists to the, coming to the island and you can just see that when you're here. Um, there's no hostels at all, so you have to stay in a homestay and you're definitely going to be paying a bit more money to stay in a homestay. Um, again, because there's not too much competition for accommodation, so they can just charge whatever they like. Um, a lot of Vietnamese tourists do come to Namdu and yeah, they they probably stay in like um, with families and you can stay with a homestay with your family and get like two beds and the, the cost comes down if you're doing it that way but if you're a solo traveler and just go and stay in a homestay it is quite expensive. So you're looking at about 300 to 500,000 dong compared to um, a normal hostel that I would pick would be about like 100,000 to 200,000. So definitely like double the price you'd stay, you'd, um, you'd pay if you're staying in a hostel. Um, so yeah, like getting to Namdu Island, um, if you're coming from Ho Chi Minh City, you'd take a bus from Ho Chi Minh to Rakia, which is about five hours. And then from Rakia, you'd probably stay a night in Rakia and then get a ferry the next day to Namdu which takes about two and a half hours. So it's not a difficult journey to make, um, but it's kind of unfortunate because you do need to stay in a hostel usually for one night in Rakia, just because the ferries leave um, quite early in the morning to get to Namdu. And the cost is pretty cheap by ferry to get here. It's like 200,000 dong, which is like 10 US dollars or about 15 Australian dollars. So yeah, the transportation here isn't really that expensive. Um, it's yeah, just more of the homestay situation, which is expensive. But once you're here, the food is again like dirt cheap because it's Vietnam. Pay I paid thirty thousand dong this morning for my breakfast, which was so filling. Like I'm still full, and it's almost one p.m. Um, and thirty thousand dong is something like. I don't know, 60 cents Australian. So it's very good, very cheap and super delicious. Um, highly recommend. Um, but yeah, from the research that I did do before I came, um, there was a lot of sort of iffy information about foreigners coming here. So people who aren't um, Vietnamese. Um, from what I read, a few years ago, you needed to get some sort of foreigner permit from the Rakia police station um, because apparently this is a military base. I didn't know it was, don't know if it is, but that's what I read. And you needed to get some sort of like military base permit to come here. And then other things I read said that foreigners weren't allowed to come here at all. And other things I read said that they had no issue coming here as a foreigner. So I just booked my ticket and came, showed them my visa which is just like a standard three month Vietnamese um, multiple entry visa. And that was totally fine. Like no one said anything. Um, so I think that might've changed now. I think that foreigners are allowed to come here. 
Um, but again, like not many foreigners here at all. I'm probably the only white person here at the moment. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone else. Um, most, most people here are Vietnamese. So it has been like a tiny bit difficult, but really like in the scheme of things with Google, with the internet, like nothing is that hard anymore. Traveling is such a breeze. You can just type in like Vietnamese to English translation and just type something in and it's, it's easy, it's fine. Um, so no, nothing has been too much of a difficulty besides the homestay situation. As I said, there's no hostels, a bit expensive. I ended up going to a homestay that was just not very good. Like, it really wasn't very good. It was almost like a prison. Just white walls, white bed. I got bitten alive by mosquitoes. And like, I'm not the one to complain about accommodation. Like, I'm just glad I can even stay here and visit the island. But the person who told me to come to the homestay like the owner said that someone would take me around on a scooter because I told him that I wasn't able to drive a scooter, like I don't know how to. And I asked him if I could rent a bike or something and he just said, no, like we'll take you, stay at my homestay, we will take you around. But then when I got dropped off there, I, yeah, I literally just got dropped off and they drove away and I got stuck in this small like room and it was pouring with rain outside. I went for a walk but it was a bit of a shame to sort of waste my first night here not being able to explore not even being able to go to the main pier to get like food or dinner i did walk i did like go for a nice long walk but it really would have been nice to have a scooter and this is the type of island that you need a scooter to get around um, because yeah it's not built up at all there is not too much in the way of tourism or industry here like there is just no way around besides a scooter or a push bike um, and unfortunately my hostel or homestay didn't have those available um, but that's okay because I moved homestays this morning and I had a lovely Vietnamese man drive me around and show me the island and take me to the beach and he was really lovely really kind um, his wife owns a coffee like cafe and that was nice I had a coffee there this morning as well um, so yeah, like I definitely recommend coming to this island, but just be mindful that maybe if you're not super comfortable going places that might be a tiny bit difficult in terms of the language and in terms of getting around, um, then you might want to come here with someone and not just come by yourself. Um, but no, definitely I felt quite safe here. Um, and that's not something that you always feel being a solo traveler and being a woman. So I've just felt super safe. Everyone is super lovely. Um, on my walk yesterday, everyone was just smiling at me and the, the children were coming up and asking me questions. And everyone has just been super lovely, super helpful. Um, yeah, it's been really, really nice. And it's been a good experience actually. Like I really enjoy coming to places that aren't too built up with tourists because you really feel like it's something a bit special that you're experiencing that maybe not everyone's experienced before. And it's also really nice just feeling a bit uncomfortable and being a bit out of your comfort zone because um, I think it's those sort of moments that you learn to adapt to change and you have to sort of figure out a way to get by. And um, there are some negatives, of course, like every place. Um, but yeah, so first of all, there's a lot of rubbish. Um, and you can see that just walking around the island everywhere you go. It doesn't matter if you're at the pier, doesn't matter if you're at the beach, doesn't matter if you're driving through um, the hills and up the mountains. There's just stacks of rubbish just dumped and from what I've heard they just light it on fire as a way to get rid of the rubbish. But again that is a problem that the government probably needs to intervene with and help the locals on this island have some sort of environmentally friendly way of um, eradicating their rubbish because it doesn't seem like there's any other way than just to put it in a big pile and just burn it which sucks but I mean what else can they do really I mean I'm not too sure I haven't asked anyone I can't really ask anyone about it um, because no one speaks English but that is something that I have seen on multiple islands I've been to in Southeast Asia in general 
and um, not even small islands, but just like really remote, far away places. They just seem to burn rubbish because they don't know what else to do with it, or there's just not um, the facilities available to deal with the rubbish properly and safely and environmentally friendly. I was swimming, you can just see like pieces of rubbish floating in the water, and that really ruins the experience of swimming for me because just not yeah, knowing how devastating it is to the environment in the water and the marine life. Um, it's not good and also who wants to swim in rubbish like no one really wants that in terms of like restaurants cafes there's not too much you'll find most of that stuff by the pier where the ferry goes to and there's a few cafes where you can get coffee and iced tea and some alcoholic drinks there are a few restaurants that sell like seafood and other Vietnamese dishes but mostly seafood seems to be like the real like kicker as to why people come here as well just to eat all the the seafood because that's the main industry here um, fishing right there's a population of 5,000 people living on the island and of course that probably changes as people leave and come back I spoke to some guy who his hometown is Namdu but he's moved to Ho Chi Minh to study and he says like a lot of kids his age oh kids he's like in his early 20s but a lot of people his age leave Namdu to go to like a bigger city to study or get ed get an education um, and then they'll come back and visit but the main industry here is fishing and um, yeah exporting fish there's also like a few diving not schools but places you can dive from what I've heard it's nothing like Nha Trang which is like more renowned for its diving um, in Vietnam but it's still possible so yeah you can still go diving here if you have your open water got my open water um, but yeah no it's been a really nice experience coming to this island and it's been good as well to have a bit of isolation time and not speak to anyone so yeah, it's been really nice it's quite small so you can get around the island in about an hour and a half by scooter and pretty much see the whole thing so yeah, it's definitely a destination you can come to for a few days as like a quick getaway if you're already in Vietnam or nearby in Cambodia. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. I'm also intrigued to go to Phu Quoc, but I don't think I'll have time to get there until later on, like probably in a few months time. But um, yeah, I'm definitely interested to see the difference of development between the two places because they are super close to each other. But the only difference is like the Quoc has just majorly developed in terms of, terms of tourism and industry, whereas uh, Namdu is very much still underdeveloped. They only got put on the electricity grid a few years ago. So there's still a period of time throughout each day where the electricity gets shut off. But that doesn't seem to be a problem because from what I noticed, it happened in the middle of the night last night. So it was on until maybe like 11 p.m. and then it turned off and it started up again this morning at about 7 a.m. in the morning so it doesn't seem to be a big issue really I mean you're gonna sleep that time anyway but no definitely a cool island yeah really enjoying it so far and I'm keen to go out tonight and maybe just have a drink with some of the locals and get some food and then I've got my ferry back tomorrow to Rakia and I'm gonna continue up the north up north of Vietnam but yeah I hope you enjoyed my first video um, please let me know in the comments if you'd want me to make something like this again. Again, it's my first video, like, I haven't practiced this before. But it's definitely something I'd like to get into because I enjoy traveling and I enjoy film. Um, I've always wanted to make some, make films, like make short films. And I guess this is just like the first like stepping stone into doing that, just practicing really with my camera. And also please let me know your experiences of Nam Du if you've been here before. Um, as a Vietnamese person or as a Western tourist, I would like to know both experiences. Um, but yeah, bye bye.